Rachel Levis is apologizing to Katie Maloney. We have Noah Cyrus getting a little messy with her sister Miley's ex-husband. And the morally corrupt Faith Stowers has launched her podcast. And you better believe we're going to talk about it. Let's get it. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Surf Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. <sighs> Today drained me. What's going on, guys? I hope you're having a great start to your Tuesday. Hopefully, your week is off to a good start. I uh, hope you enjoyed your Monday. Monday. Monday fun day. Um, not so much. But, Zach, I hope you're feeling better. I'm always feeling great, my love. Was I not feeling good? Um, I'm feeling great this morning. I'm here with you, and I'm happy to be here. Um, I guess we should start with the Rachel Levis of it all. Uh. Um, Rachel went on her podcast and so actually back it up. Beep, beep, beep. We have Rachel. Uh, she was at the iHeartRadio Awards on top, uh, um, on top of, uh, well, I guess she has a podcast with iHeartRadio. Katie Maloney and Dana also have a podcast with iHeartRadio. So at the iHeart Awards, obviously Rachel was there. Katie was there. Dana was there. And then there was an article that ranked the best and the worst dressed. Okay. So I guess it's interesting because a couple weeks ago she revealed like all the people that like knew about her affair with Tom Sandoval. She outed one of those people as Joe, um, sloppy Joe from the Schwartz's roommate slash friend slash friend with benefits. Um, so yeah, which he's not dating. He's actually, he has a new girlfriend now that he's been, that's actually really Pretty, but not that Joe's not pretty. She just, you know, needs to brush her hair. But um, well, because when you see the reunion look, when you see Joe's reunion look, like you can tell Joe can actually clean it up. And Joe's actually a cute patootie, right? She's a hot, she's, she's you know, just a little dry shampoo goes a long way. A long way. Okay. Um, she should know that. She's a hairdresser, she's a hairstylist. Anyway, I guess Rachel is still friends with Joe um, because she, I guess, convinced Joe to post to Joe's Instagram story uh, this article that talks about the best dressed and the worst dressed from the iHeartRadio Awards. Two of the worst dressed were Katie Maloney and Dana. And then best dressed was Rachel, Raquel, Rocky, Rocky, Bang, Bang, which to me was kind of interesting. Like, Rachel looked great, but it didn't, like, I don't know, it, it wasn't like a standout. I didn't see many of the the looks from the iHeart Awards, but it wasn't much of a standout look. And I didn't think Katie looked bad. I mean, Dana looked a little also underwhelming. Her like dress wasn't anything special to me. Um, her outfit was just like, okay. But like, I didn't think either of them were the best or the worst dressed. I'm sure there were much better and much worse options, but whatever. Rachel was on the best dress list. Dana and Katie were on the worst dress list. Rachel encouraged Joe, sloppy Joe, to post to her Instagram um, showing a side-by-side -side of Rachel being best and Katie being worst. And then Rachel decided, you know, I'm in a season of taking accountability and I'm a new person. And so therefore, I'm going to apologize to Katie for letting my ego get in the way and allowing, you know, and encouraging sloppy Joe to post about this, you know, um, which was interesting because I'm like, I thought Rachel was the impressionable one. I thought Rachel was the one that everyone was manipulating. Be it here. We have Rachel encouraging Joe to do something naughty, do something spicy. So, Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I, but now she's, she wants to take accountability and say, oh, my God, my ego got in the way. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have encouraged Sloppy Joe to post this on her story because that wasn't right. And women have to support women. And I'm trying to be a better person. And I'm like, you're taking a little too much accountability for something that's really like you're taking more accountability for, you know, manipulating Sloppy Joe than you did about your seven month affair with Sandoval. Just saying, especially now that you're suing Ariana and Sandoval. So it was interesting. Um, I mean, I guess it's good that she's taking accountability. What else did she say? Let's read some of her quotes that she said on her podcast that I guess people are still listening to. 
she said, I decided that that was not my best decision. And I have to take accountability because I'm in this space of learning and growing and also being kind. And it's so easy to get on the same level as some of those other people, but that's not who I want to be. She, oh, she also said that she reached out to Katie and Dana personally, um, but obviously didn't hear back from them, which I don't think Katie even cares. Katie's like, what, you sloppy Joe posted something shady about me on her Instagram story, and I care why? Katie does not give two fucks what, you know, Rachel and sloppy Joe are off doing. Sloppy Rachel and sloppy Joe. Messy Rachel. Ratchet Rachel and Sloppy Joe. Um, listen, I think it's good that she's trying to be better. I mean, I feel like this was like a big grand gesture for something that was subtly shady and not even that, you know, serious or that deep. But if she's trying to move forward and trying to take accountability, maybe it's a good, you know, maybe it's a good point. Um, can Rachel's podcast comments be taken into consideration regarding the lawsuit? Good question, Sandra. Didn't think about that. But I mean, that is something that could be used against her, actually, about her, um, you know, her behavior speaks to her, um, her behavior speaks to her character. So that could be could have been used against her or this still can be well, I guess now she's like, No, but I'm taking accountability. I'm a better person. I don't know. But if you're a better person, and you're like a healed person now, then why are you still trying to sue for damages about how this impacted you if you've moved beyond that and you're in a better place? I don't know. We'll see how their lawyers play it in court. Um, <sighs> do we want to talk about the Cyrus, Noah and Miley, the Cyrus family? Or let's talk about Faith Stowers because this is probably going to ruffle some feathers. So Faith Stowers has now launched, like I told you, she was launching her tell-all podcast about Vanderpump Rules. And then on top of that, she announced that she's starring in a new Randall Emmett film alongside John Travolta and Good For You, right? Well, she, I guess, dropped the podcast. Um, there was a clip of it that I saw on Twitter from Bravo Babe. And it was just interesting because in this clip, Faith talks about... Um, Faith talks about how she, how Stassi and Kristen calling the cops impacted her, right? And she's like, I still need therapy for this. Like, I'm still traumatized by it. Um, I'm like, girl, you, you still need therapy. It's been nine years. Go to therapy. Like, good for, like, nobody's, like, not encouraging you to go to therapy, but, like, go to therapy. Why, why is it taking you nine years to make a podcast to not talk about like it? I was just a little, I was, I was taken aback by, I listen, I know we're all affected by things that happened in our past, but I, to still be traumatized by it and say, you still need therapy for it. Go to therapy. Like, I think we all like are supporting you to go to therapy. Like we want you to heal from this so we can all stop talking about it. Listen, if we will start a GoFundMe for Faith Stowers' therapy, if it's taken her nine years, then like, yeah, let's do it. Like, let's go. Let's rally. Everybody, let's send Faith to therapy. Because she, you know, why are you talking to your friend on a podcast? Do the do what Rachel did and bring a therapist on your podcast. Work it out on, you know, work it out on the air. But it's interesting because she talks about, and I feel like we have, we had this conversation four years ago. Not okay to hold a knife at someone's throat either. I don't believe that actually happened. I believe that that, well, one, Lala Ken has denied that, number one. And number two, I believe that w whatever version of that story was exaggerated, right? It was the same way um, Ashley Darby and Candace Dillard on Potomac. Remember when Candace got the butter knife and she was swinging around the butter knife and Ashley's like, why are you swinging around a butter knife? That's kind of what it what like i think i don't again i don't know what actually happened she claims it happened on camera we don't know because it never actually aired but lala did something and she had something and whatever um so to say that she had a knife held to her throat i think is a bit of an exaggeration but again it's all alleged we don't know um but yeah maybe that would be part of the therapy lala allegedly uh 
again, yes, you're right. It is alleged, number one. And number two, um, we we don't know. We haven't seen the footage, so we can't judge that. Lala's saying it didn't happen. Faith is saying it did happen. Um, but also, she said that the therapy, she needed therapy in relation to having Stassi and Kristen called the cops on. So let's not put more words in her mouth. Um, let's have her save her words for therapy. But um, I feel like, we, again, we had this conversation four years ago, back in 2020. But since we're revisiting it now, um, I decided her podcast should be, should be called Allegedly. Um, okay. So I decided... I brought the bunny. I pulled out Stassi's book off of my head where she actually addresses this. And I want to read because Stassi's addressed this and Kristen has addressed this. Um, Yeah, I'm pretty sure producers would have stepped in if someone was waving a knife threatening during the scene. Yeah, if she had a knife to her throat, you're going to tell, like, that's a liability on the network. They're not going to allow that to happen. That's why they don't allow physical altercations to happen anymore. So, Yeah. Are these people closing in on 40 grow up or I mean, I'm just like when? Yeah, but here we go. I brought the bunny. Let's get into it. Okay. This is what Stassi wrote in her book when she addressed all of this after the whole canceling of 2020. Okay. Right within the first chapter. Stassi writes, maybe you're wondering why did I get canceled? If you're reading this book, you probably know. But if you're not aware and just found this book on the sidewalk or something, here it is. Faith Stowers was a cast member on Vanderpump Rules for a season. Ooh, the shade. Um, and during that time, she slept with Jax when he was dating Brittany. Let's not forget. In front of the grandma. Remember, she banged him in front of the grandma and then accidentally recorded it. And then it accidentally got to James Kennedy. And then it accidentally ended up throughout the cast. Okay. Faith Stowers was a cast member on Vanderpump Rules for a season. And during that time, she slept with Jax when he was dating Brittany, who was and is one of my closest friends. Well, how times have changed because she's not anymore. During the season, Kristen Doty, my fellow cast member, started getting texts from people alleging that Faith had stolen from them in the past and saying that Faith was in a surveillance video showing someone stealing. Then we saw the news article with the video still of the woman who was accused of stealing. So we called the tip line. We stupidly thought it might be Faith, partly because multiple people had been texting Kristen saying that it was her. And also in our very flawed detective work, we thought the description of the woman's tattoos sounded like Faith's. Kristen left a message on the tip line and gave her own contact information and we never heard back. So that was the end of it. To my knowledge, Faith never even knew about the call until she heard me talk about it on a podcast a year later. I wasn't hiding it, but I also shouldn't have been talking and joking about it. We also shouldn't have made that phone call, but I didn't understand that at the time. When the incident was brought up again years later, so many variables of the story became twisted by the media, which became incredibly frustrating. Once the online gossip machines start grinding away, it's almost impossible to stop it. I read articles that said that we were playing a prank on Faith by calling the cops. That was the most infuriating lie, that it was a prank. But at the time, I didn't feel I had the right to defend myself. It took me a while to process my feelings and recognize how layered it all was. It took time to recognize that Faith felt it was about race because there is an actual serious problem between the Black community and the police in America. I understand that now, but I didn't then. I had a lot to learn. Okay. There we go. Cop without a badge right here. We just read it. So they didn't call the cops. I feel like, again, I'm like, why are we having this conversation again four years later? They didn't call the cops. It was a news tip line. And they didn't just, you know, they claimed that there were reasons why they believed that this was faith because other people had made accusations about faith, about their experiences with faith, stealing stuff in the past. Um, and they also said that the woman had tattoos that they thought possibly matched faith's tattoos. Okay. They called a news tip line, never heard back from it. Cops were never involved. Cops never pursued it. It went nowhere. Okay. Pay attention, please. 
So I think that it is a little irresponsible of Faith to go on a podcast, knowing that we've already discussed this, knowing that Kristen reached out to Faith directly, apologized to Faith directly. Stassi clarified this in the book. They've talked about this all before. Um, so knowing that this has already been a conversation that we've had for her to then go on a podcast now and still say that they called the cops on her one, I think it is not only false, but it's also like only because that is a serious issue, right? As Stasi addressed in the book, that is a real concern, you know, and that's not to invalidate Faith's feelings, but as Stasi clarified in the book, it's something that she didn't, she wasn't made aware of until a year later after it had already happened. And there wasn't a, you know, police call, police to not get involved, police to not come after Faith. Um, it was reckless and irresponsible. Absolutely. I don't want to defend Stasi and Kristen for doing that, but they've taken their accountability. They've apologized. And here we are four years later. So when do we get to move on from this? How do we get to move on from this? Not saying that we have to invalidate Faith's feelings or invalidate Faith's experience, but like, how do we productively and positively move forward? Faith said that the cops interrogated her. When did she say that? I don't remember Faith ever saying that. Um, but also, I don't believe the cops ever interrogated her. When did they interrogate her? They also didn't have Faith's information. They had Kristen's information. Kristen called the tip line and said, hi, I believe I have information about the person in your video. Here's my information. Give me a call back. They never gave them a call back. So the tip line never followed up how irresponsible of the police, unless they had other leads or there were other priorities. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we see how you just did invalidate her feelings. How did I invalidate her feelings? We've heard about her feelings for the last nine years. We've, we've validated them for nine years. What, I mean, it just, you know, it's just, you know, I'm just like, okay. Like, I don't understand what she wants at this point because she's trying to make a statement about this being about um, justice reform. And so I'm like, okay, great. This happened nine years ago. We had this conversation four years ago. So over the past nine years and over the past four years, how are you contributing to social justice reform? What are you doing? Aside from making yourself relevant in the press by continuing to talk about this, what have you done for justice reform? I say that as somebody that just opened up about autism and came at Holly Madison and Tallulah, you know, Willis and is getting a lot of shit for that because now I'm misogynistic, I'm anti-woman, I'm, you know, don't understand people on the opposite end of the spectrum and all the things that I've been labeled and called for the past, what, 72 hours at this point, which is fine. I knew that that was going to happen by sharing our experience, but my brother's experience is valid. There are many families that I was trying to speak up for to hold space for them. But not only am I talking about this online to draw attention for myself, but I spent a decade of my life actually fundraising and helping these families. I started volunteering when I was 15 years old. And by the time I was 25, I ended my term as the executive director of one of the largest autism foundations in our country that was helping people internationally. I did that until I was 25. I gave up my entire 20s or my early 20s. I gave up my formative years. I worked there full time. I didn't have a social life. I didn't have a dating or a personal life. I gave, and that was my choice. And I'm very grateful for the opportunities and the experiences. And that was good work. And I, there are so many families that reached out to me over these last 72 hours that have thanked me for speaking out. But I'm saying, when there's a cause that's important to you, what are you doing to provide to that? You know what I mean? We've talked about this for four years and she wants to make this. I've worked with the, I've worked with the toothless. I've worked with the homeless. Thank you. I have worked with the toothless and I have worked with the homeless. Um, JK, JK. But like, if you're trying to make that, like my issue is when people try to make a, um, they try to take a stance for an issue, a cause, but all they're doing is making the cause about themselves. You know what I mean? Like, if it matters to you, if it's something that, and listen, guys, a lot of people are saying nice things about me in the live chat. I don't, listen, I'm not, I don't need the clout. I am good in my own heart. I know the work that I've done, um, seeing the families, seeing where they're at today. I'm also working on something special with all of them since reconnecting with them. Um, so 
I, I appreciate the kind things that you're saying, but like, I'm not doing that. I'm not bringing that up for the validation. I'm saying fucking do something. You keep talking about this. You're trying to sue the network four years after they've already taken action against the stars. I feel like the audience has moved on because we're watching the Valley. We're watching Jax and Kristen on the Valley. Stassi wrote her book and people showed up. It became a New York times bestseller. So if they were able to apologize, take accountability and move on from it. And the network took action at the time by firing them. And they've since, you know, shown remorse. Then at what point do we then, you know, move forward with this? Or what are you doing? You you haven't gone to therapy in the last nine years? Got it. You want to talk about social justice reform, but what are you doing for it other than a self-serving podcast? Like, please explain that to me. So, I don't know. I don't know. Krista Marie says, we just disagree respectfully sometimes. I don't understand what you're disagreeing with, though. I'm happy to agree to disagree. I just, I, I don't understand um, what it is you're disagreeing with. Nina said, wow, uh, what you did yesterday, Zach, was powerful. As an autistic person, I was crying when you were bringing up experiences with your brother and your work. I also want to thank you for speaking up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Listen, I see you. You see me. I posted um, some of the message. I got a lot of really sweet messages yesterday. And so I posted them on Instagram. Just like let it because there are so many families that are hurting or are frustrated or don't feel seen and heard. And Autism Awareness Month is a challenging month for them. A lot of them have reached out and expressed that like this month is challenging for them because there's this constant celebration of autism without also acknowledging that there are struggles that come, you know, with living life with autism for the family, for the individual, for the people around them. And so all I wanted to do was just use my platform to say, hey, this is my experience, but not just my experience. I want these other families and these other individuals, these adults, these kids, I want them to feel seen. I want them to be seen, not just feel seen, but to be seen and to be heard, because that's important. If we're going to bring awareness to this, they deserve a light shed on them. We should not only be looking at autism as Holly Madison, because again, I will repeatedly say she's not the face of autism. And people are like, well, she's not trying to say that she's the face of autism, but she kind of is. She's saying it without saying it by putting her face out there and constantly talking about it in the press and talking about how it's given her life so much meaning. By doing that, by using her face to be to use that as an identity, this is another thing that I want people to understand too. Autism is not my brother. That is not his identity. He is a full, smart capable, valuable person in this world. Autism does not define him, you know, so I'm not going to celebrate that as his identity. I know some people feel differently. Holly Madison happens to be one of those people. Holly Madison is also somebody that lives a very privileged life. She has a lot of luxuries that my brother will never have. And many other people on the spectrum will not have either. Okay. Don't want to invalidate or take away her experience. However, I just want to shed light that these, pe these are people and they do struggle sometimes, and they struggle because of their autism diagnosis. It's not necessarily something that everybody wants to celebrate because the reality is, is it does make some people's lives a lot more challenging. So I want those individuals to be seen. I want their stories to be heard. I want their experiences to be validated by people that don't understand it and just know that these people exist and their stories deserve to be heard too. And there are real milestones that they're making and accomplishments that they're receiving, you know? Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. Dun, 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 dun. I love the valley. I love the valley too. It's good. Ooh, Krista Marie said, Jesus Christ, goodbye. You're impossible. Okay. Bye, girl. Sending you love. Hope you have a good day. Um, yeah. I didn't mean to send her away. I'm sad that she's leaving. Um, I do have love in my heart for everybody, even when I pop off on a bitch, you know? Um, that said, what shall we move on to the well, we talked about the faith stuff. We talked about the Katie and Rachel stuff. Um should we talk about uh okay, let's talk about the Cyrus family because they are messy. It's your bestie, Miss Miss Westie. Test me. 
Um, Noah Cyrus. Okay. There was a uh there was a thirst trap that Liam Hemsworth posted on his Instagram, which a lot of people are saying he's on steroids, which I I wouldn't be surprised by. But so Liam Hemsworth was formerly married to Miley Cyrus. They were married, I believe, from 2018 to 2020 and like had dated before then. And then they like were on pause for a bit and then dated for many years prior and they were engaged and they've had a long history, right? No longer together. Now they're exes. He posts this thirst trap on Instagram. And then Noah Cyrus, who's Miley's sister, went and did a little double tap and liked the photo. And people are like, what? How are you going to like his photo? He's your sister's ex. I guess that's the question of the day, right? Is it, one, okay to still follow your sibling's ex, numero uno? Oh, Kristen Marie's still here. She didn't leave the live chat. Girl, you said bye. We said bye to you. We sent you flowers on your way out. Um, okay, but one, is it okay to still follow your ex, your your sibling's ex on Instagram? And two, it was the leg day post. Yes, Joe. He posted on Instagram and he hashtagged it leg day. So two, is it okay to like a thirst trap? We know that um we know that. Uh, Noah is messy, right? Because then there are also the rumors um, that show that the mom just got married to this guy that was rumored to be a friend with benefits with Noah. So Noah was hooking up with this dude. And then I believe they were hooking up for like eight months. And then after that, the dude goes off and starts dating the mom. And then he marries the mom and Noah was not at the wedding. Okay. So there's that little history. So Noah seems to be messy and she seems to be on the outs with some of her family members. So she has since come out and she's like, who gives a fuck if I liked his photo on Instagram? Like, what does that matter? My question is, does it matter? It's up to the sibling. If they're okay with it, then it's okay. Says uh, Pina can. Okay, Pina can. Pina can do it. Um... So do we, agree? I think it depends on like the relationship that you had with that person. I don't follow. No, I think I would unfollow. Like if you're out of my life, well, you all, well, you guys also know about my friend that broke up with someone and then his boyfriend unfollowed me and I'm the only person in the friend group that got unfollowed. And you already know I was feeling hot about that. Right. So I mean, but I do think, like, at some point, maybe you do unfollow the ex. Because what's the point of following them? What's the point of keeping them around? Um, but I also get that, like, if it's been years and you just happen to come across a photo and you're like, wow, he looks like he's doing well. He's jacked. He's living his life. Like, I don't know. Who is Noah? No one cares. Noah is... Miley Cyrus's sister, and that's why we care because she's Miley Cyrus's sister, and she's over here liking thirst traps of Miley Cyrus's ex husband. And not only that, but again, there was the drama with her mama, and the, the the mom married her friend with benefits. That's also fucking weird, right? Could you imagine if your mom married your friend with benefits? That would be really weird. I don't know if I would be comfortable with that. I would be like, the fuck? No, thank. You. That's weird. But that's weird on the mama. Mm mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Noah has some good music. Krista says, is Noah okay with her mom now? And is she in a good place with Miley? We don't know if she's in a good place with Miley. Um, and I don't believe that she's in a good place with her mom because her mom just got married and Noah was not at the wedding. And the wedding was held at Miley's house. And there were the rumors about the husband. Um, there were rumors that... She was that they had to have security to make sure that Noah didn't show up and that Noah didn't cause a scene. Could you imagine your daughter shows up to your wedding because you're marrying the guy that she was banging? Oof. Jerry, 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 Jerry. I know that's right. Nikki says that Liam looks hot in that picture. He does look hot. He looks a little jacked, but he looks hot. Sarah says, we're all grown and we all make our own choices. That's true. 
Joe wants the Cyrus family to have a reality show. Yeah, like the Umansky sisters. I've been catching up on buying Beverly Hills, and I have to say the Umansky sisters are wild. Nessa, oh, Nessa's here. Nessa said, I stayed friends with my ex's mom after we broke up. That happens a lot. I know. Um, would it be weird if your ex married your mom? Weird family. I need Andy and a camera. Yeah, that's quite a tangled web. Yeah. Apparently, there's a drift between Miley and Noah. I think because Miley seemingly is on her mom's side with the husband. Um, that's why Miley held the wedding at her house for her mom and the husband. So, yeah. Joe says, Liam looks too jacked in that photo. It's no longer proportional to his head. I agree. That's what looks weird to me. And that's why people are saying he's on steroids or he must be on steroids is because he like, it just, it looks unnatural. So, yeah. Tell your bestie Carlos King to get him a show. Krista Marie. She says, it's weird now that I think about liking my sister's ex-husband who I've known like a brother. No, I want. You want your 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 sister's ex? You're thinking about liking your sister's ex-husband? Oh, girl, that's messy. That's, that's real messy. They're all robots, Kyle's daughter. I don't think they're robots. I actually think they're entertaining. Like when they were all coming at that one girl, what was her name? Brittany? Daphne, I don't know, something basic. But like when they were all coming at her about the the, the hot guy and uh, him going after Alexia and then, or not Alexia, him going after um, Portia, Alexia, Sarah. What the hell's her name? The boring one. I don't remember her name. It's not Alexia. It's not Farah. I don't remember. But I don't know. Watch, watch, um, Watch the, the Umanskis on Buying Beverly Hills. You look so good. That, ooh, thank you. Thanks, boo. Happy up in the gym. I feel like I'm just like in a new mood, like in a new vibe these days. Like I, you know, we're letting the scruff kind of grow out. We're letting the brows get a little bushy. We're bulking up at the gym. I've been thinking about getting some tattoos lately. Guys, I, you know, Today's day one of no alcohol. I decided I'm going to take a break from alcohol. Two weeks. Only two weeks. Just two weeks off. Okay, we're not giving it up forever. We're not going full Kyle Richards. But I feel like I'm I'm in my Kyle Richards era. Working out every day. You know? New headspace. Leaving Mauricio. All of that. I'm here for it. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Zach in black is a good thing. Ooh, thank you, Jenny. Wow, you guys are, you're, I, you're pulling out your Noah Cyrus right now. Sophia, yeah, that's her name. Sorry, I forgot what her name was. Sophia. Yes, tattoos. Do tell, where would you get your first tattoo? Um, I like the, the thigh tattoos, you know, like the ones that are above the knee and they're like kind of mid thigh. I think those are kind of sexy, especially when you have like short shorts on in the summer or like maybe something right here kind of hot. I don't know. I don't know. A little tattoo right here. A little sexy tattoo right here. I heart Jason like right here above my nipple. You never know. Maybe I'll get a tramp stamp. IDK. You may not want to go back. Oh, to drink. No, I think I'll definitely want to go back to drinking. Let's not get crazy. Let's not get wild. Are you having problems in your marriage? It hasn't been our best year. I'll tell you that. Um, listen, I may go lesbian. Who knows? The options are endless. All is on the horizon. Are you sober? Cur I'm sober curious. Yes. Are you LA sober? Um... I mean, I have like mushroom gummies and I wouldn't be a, a opposed to like a weed gummy, but like, you know, I'm going to live life. We'll see. Mm -mm -mm. You don't have one yet? No, I don't have a tattoo yet. Get a temporary tattoo. I don't want a temporary tattoo. Jason? Yeah, I heart Jason. <laughs> let's, let's really commit to the brand. Um, hello. Go maniac, sick bitch, psychopath. 
I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Mm. I'm gonna show you. He will never emotionally fulfill you. Well, it's okay. He doesn't have to emotionally fulfill me as long as he allows me to fill him every night. Um, Can't wait to see what happens as you go wild, Zach. Maybe I'll ride a motorcycle. Go lesbian, sober, curious. Now, sober, curious just sounds boring. You know, you'll miss your wine. I'm sure I will. I will. What it is, do you get your mushroom gummies in LA or online asking for a friend? Um, find yourself a good friend. <laughs> um, I don't, uh, I mean, I'm sure I'll miss my, I'm not giving it up forever. Well, here's the thing. At Orange Theory, they have the dry try coming up with this, which is like essentially like a dry triathlon because there's no swimming element to it. But it's, um, I think it's like, a 5k on the treadmill and then 2000 meters on the rower and then 300 body reps 300 reps of uh like push-ups and burpees and all that stuff so that's coming up on april 20th and i think i'm gonna do the full dry try i'm not gonna do the sprint i'm gonna do the full one um and i want to be like in the best place because like right now i drink or i'll occasionally you know lately i'll I'll occasionally don't judge me you're gonna judge me anyway i don't give a fuck i'll occasionally like sneak a cig um like not like i'm not a smoker but like occasionally like if it's cold outside and i'm feeling the vibe like normally i would have like a cigarette like once maybe twice a year at like a wedding or if i went to vegas you know but lately i'll just like I'll have a little cig here, a little cig there. Like after our show at the Bourbon Room, Jeff and Josh and I were ripping cigs in the back of the Bourbon Room. Like I'm not opposed to it, but I'm like, damn, if I'm 30, I can, you know, catch a cig here or there. I can drink, you know, socially and still be tearing it up at the gym the way that I am. If I go hard, clean for like the next week and a half, because we're almost, we're going to be approaching April 20th soon. If I go just like clean for that time, I will be ready. My head will be ready. My mind will be ready. My body will be good. So, yeah. I'm kind of here for it, guys. I've done without alcohol and taken a few weeks away. Need to get my mind right. Yeah, I think it's good. It's helpful. It gives your body a nice little reset. Gives your liver a little break. You're going to get one tattoo and then you're going to want more. I got three within six months. Yeah, Kyle's now on her fifth tattoo. I don't know. Some people don't. Um, oops. Boo thing loves to get filled. Although Zach has Zach finally uh, a- agreed. No, I have not bottomed, Joe. I have not bottomed. Last time I bottomed was like last June. Um, I've been a little bottom curious. That was a members only discussion, Joe. What we discuss in members only it stays in members only. But you know, if you bring it up, we're going to talk about it. Um, but yeah, I've been a little bottom curious. So, ooh, forensic mama eighty three says I'm still friends with my first boyfriend and fiance's mother. Well, I mean, if you're friends with your boyfriend and things ended on good terms, that's different. But like Miley and Liam are not on good terms, so for Noah to be liking the photo, that's just messy. It's your bestie, Miss Miss Westie. These hoes try to test me. It's about to get messy. Messy. You can still have wine, Marg's beer. Give me one margarita. I'm going to open my legs. Give me two margaritas. I'm going to give you some head. Give me three margaritas. I'm going to put it in my puss. Give me four margaritas. I'm going to put it in my tush. Give me five margaritas. Five margaritas. Five margaritas. 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 Um. Yeah. You will know about being sober only if you try. I'm not going sober. I'm just taking a break. I'm taking a pause, you guys. Let's not make it seem like I'm going sober now. Mm-mm. Brit says, bye. See you tomorrow. Brit's like, I'm bored. All right. Well, since Brit's bored and Brit wants to leave, I, oh, and Rummy says that it's 2.30 in the morning in her neck of the woods. Um, I guess on that note, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you're living life this week. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the eclipse. I saw some people were really enjoying the eclipse and like doing parties and getting glasses and good for you, you know? All right. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. 
be sure to, if you haven't done so yet, catch my new show. It's called Disaster Daters. It's available on Spotify. You can binge the first six episodes and new episodes will be coming soon. So get ready for that. Um, if you, yeah, go listen to Disaster Daters. You can watch it exclusively on Spotify or you can listen to it on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Um, if you want to give me a follow and keep up with me all over the internet, you can follow me at Just Plain Zach all over the internet, or you can follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach on Instagram. Catch new episodes of No Filter with Zach Peter Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning streaming live here on YouTube, or you can always listen to them on your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Apple. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please leave me a five-star review um, and let me know what you love about the show these days. Subscribe and like here on the YouTube if you haven't done so yet. Be sure to hit that little bell button so that way I'm always up in those notifications when the tea is hot. We don't like cold tea. So, all right, guys. Love ya. Mean it. Ciao for now. Bye.